like to introduce uh, the team here. We have Vimal from Infosys, and this is uh, John Philip from Globe Telecom, Hello. who's championing this uh, catalyst, and uh, myself, Felix, from Ericsson. Um, I'd like to start off with uh, Philip here. Philip, um, would you tell us um, and the audience, right, what brought about the idea of this digital twin? So we envision the, in 2025, we envision as a digital operator that 5G would be prevalent and it would be mature. And one of the, one of the ways to be able to utilize 5G is through the use of digital twins. Right now, there's a form of digital twin in the things that we do, uh, in the devices we use, maybe in the uh, cars that we use. Uh, a digital twin is a virtual representation of uh, any object wherein you can draw real-time insights, you can, do, you can do simulations, you can do uh, forecasting. You can definitely say that that is already present right now. You have your laptops, you have your phones, you have your uh, cars, you even have health monitors. All those have information about you. It can say something about you. It can, say, it can predict something about you. Now what the Catalyst was able to see is that these information stay in these verticals. What we need to do is to be able to transfer these information, these forecasted uh, information, these simulations from these devices from one vertical to another. Right now, for example, I have a my mobile phone. I need myself to interpret that and maybe transfer it to my smart car. With a catalyst, we are able to, uh, to provide a concept of creating a dig uh, data model wherein all, these, uh, wherein all these digital twins can be built upon and then find a way, uh, produce a way to be able to send that information, that simulated information, uh, forecasted information from one twin to another. Thank you, that was fantastic, uh, Philip. Uh, maybe we ask uh, Vimal here. Vimal, would you like to just uh, show us you know, what that uh, digital twin is and uh, you know, what, what are we applying the digital twin uh, for? Sure, thanks, Felix. Uh, so as Philip already said, it is a virtual digital copy of any physical entity. And this was kind of uh, borrowed from the manufacturing industry into the telco. In terms of telco, we have all of these information that is readily available to us in a digital format. So as part of the Catalyst, what we wanted to do was try to create twins of key entities of a telco, something like your network, customer, internal operations, your mobile network, IP networks, and try to make them converse with one another so that the information and insights that are generated from the individual twins, when they share to the other twin, what impact it makes to the other. Say, uh, there were four twins that we, okay, this is like, these were the twins that we try to do as part of the catalyst. The, uh, let me take an example of a network twin, right? Like typically what happens in uh, network prediction or a demand forecasting is like we have the capabilities with the operators today to forecast what's going to happen in my network and how am I going to uh, solve the problems that come in my network, the predictive portion of the network. But uh, what we are trying to do was like carry that forward to the customer. What impact does it make to the customers? And what impact does it make to the organization or the people who are there in the organization? Say, for example, there is a network upgrade that you need to do. Do you have the right people, right skill sets? How long does it take? What would be the cost for the operations? All these things from an organization standpoint. Let me take an example of something like, uh, say, there are a number of people here attending a conference today here, right? The footfall here is so high and the bandwidth utilization might be less when compared to the other areas of needs here. Say, now we know this is happening. If we have this information from the network twin, and if this is being shared with the customer twin, probably uh, the operator can advise people who are trying to travel through this route, saying that, hey, there is a heavy bandwidth utilization here, probably take a uh, re reroute of it, take a detour. Or probably the customer twin can come back to the network twin and say, hey, no, my customers are important. Probably can you do something in your network to do it? So the interaction between the twins make it much more meaningful. And it doesn't stop here. The one that we are trying to do is only to show the power of this use case. But when you have the entire ecosystem of twins, something like your market presence, your competitor, your processes, your people, the culture of your people, internals, external customers, both coming together, that is when the power of it is more. So essentially what we are trying to do is simulation of one twin is going to be the input for the other twin. So it is going to be the effect of one uh, it is something like a butterfly effect. When something happens in one place, water is going to be there. 
and with the effect of simulation of all these models together you exactly know what to expect when all these things go live so you try to do things offline make sure you, you define your success criteria you identify your kpis make sure your kpis are in the right range and then you go for your live so it gives you a complete picture of what to expect when you want to go live great remo um maybe back to you uh philip just uh, give us a little bit of uh, insight how this digital twin has benefited uh, globe telecom right. so currently right now we have a process of uh, launching campaigns in globe uh, globe is a leading telecom in the philippines and to be able to launch a campaign to be able to provide a promo for subscribers there is a current a turnaround time of 3 months with this 3 months time uh it starts with a business he draws upon a sample business uh business uh, sample data from our subscribers whatever their uh, activities were for the past maybe for the past month and then they bring it down to the analytics guys the analytics guys would create the models they would do the validations that itself is already an iteration it may take around 3 3 iterations to be able to get the the perfect model for this campaign now when they would like to test out this campaign you would test out on real people on real sample population maybe you don't have to test it out to uh to the entire subscriber set you would want to do it maybe to around uh, 1000 people however there are two things when you launch a test campaign number one if they reply then well and good you have your insight however if they don't reply you would come back to the model guys uh, to do the business and tell them what is it about these subscribers that we are not getting what is this insight that they are not we are not getting from them that's why they're not replying so that process reiterates so you have to do your model again maybe find out what interest these people have and then maybe uh by the time you do it it's around two and a half months of uh testing that campaign and the business would say uh, i have around 60% of replies maybe this is good enough then i launch that now with the digital twins what we're saying is you don't have to do this on real life people we have the information of the customers we have information of the network all we need to do is to get that specific uh specific attributes for the customer that is only relevant to this campaign imagine we have 800 attributes that we're currently tracking our customers we have 16 million customers and if you are to track 8 uh 800 attributes for 16 million people that's a lot of data with a digital twin you only need the data that is only relevant to you at this very present time the digital twins is not uh it's not a silver bullet it's not something that we put in place and then we know our customers already what we're saying is we have data on customers and then we have our ai that we can train every day we track that ai whether or not its prediction is accurate or not So we have your information from the historical and then every day we see if your activities would match the AI uh, the the output of our AIs that, we, that the current uh the current AIs are predicting. With this we are able to turn down the that uh, turn around time from 3 months to just around a month. And this no longer involves the business because the analytics guys can do them can do it themselves. So the the transference of data transformation from one business group to another can also be lessened through this digital twin. Thank you Philip that was fantastic. And I I have a question for both of you, right? Um I I mean I work with you with, uh, through the whole uh, catalyst for digital twin and I just wanted to understand what were the, some of the challenges that uh, both of you faced uh, during this uh, um, development of the digital twin. Uh maybe we will start with Vimal. Uh, the challenge as i would say is like uh, internally with all the uh, individual silos all the organization the network organization customer and then all the internal organization of the telco are pretty much matured and we have the uh, tm forum subscribe data models that are governing them but when it comes to cross communication between these individual silos that is when uh, it was like tough for us to understand whether do we need to send all of them or couple of them what makes most impact with the other portion of the organization right so one thing what we did was like uh, it was through kpis we made sure the interaction between the twins happened through the kpis identify kpis that are most important from each one of them 
hide the intelligence behind. The twins will have their own intelligence to identify the simulation results. So the in interaction between the twins were through KPIs. So identifying these KPIs and the recommended actions for these, say for example, when, a, when there's a lot of jitter in one particular area, what would be the recommended action? That is what has been transferred to another API. And we did that through the uh, TM Forum Open API standards. So that was, we made sure there is a standard between uh, sta the uh, twins when they communicate. So that tomorrow when the twins grow in the ecosystem, we have a specific standard for communication. So maybe i just uh, continue on that line. Uh, what were some of the contributions that uh, we made to TM Forum sure, to sure. address so some of the challenges you just mentioned? Uh, definitely. So the starting point of this was the entire data model. The data, we have the data, but we need to make sure it is modeled in the right way. And we should also wanted to make sure we have a standard process because the twins can be for anything, right? Like it can be any entity. So we created a data model which will capture the actual elements which are available today in ABDR, which are available as part of the DMM uh, models. What we also augmented to it is the additional KPI and the simulation results and recommendations. For, for each of these data model, we are augmenting the KPIs and the recommended actions for each one of them. And we also made sure the same model is used across twins. So the uh, ones that we built for the Catalyst is all completely different twins. One on the customer, one on the network, one on the process and the people, and one on the mobile network, right? But all of them try to use the same model, the same concept. And the communication between the twins is through the open API. So the major contributors back to the forum is the AI data model and augmentation to the current uh, ABDR as well. So I just wanted to add one more point. Uh, as the telco services are being expanded, we, we have started seeing customer in all phases, right? Like gaming, uh, whether the uh, user is a gamer or not, the health index of a customer, all these things were also, the other facets of customers were also added to the ABDR model. Thank you very much, that was fantastic. Uh, Philip, what about you? What were some of the challenges you faced? As a champion of uh, this digital, uh, this catalyst, uh, initially when we started the catalyst, uh, we had a concept of extending the AI data model. The AI data model is currently a uh, work in progress by the by TM Forum by the AI data group. Uh, currently, we have a list of attributes, and we you, uh, we envision that we would use this AI data model and then a correlation with KPIs. Uh, currently, the, these. Uh, the AI data model only contains schemas, uh, how to define objects. But through the catalyst, we were able to determine that these are not enough, that maybe all the participants should let in on their KPIs. What do these attributes mean if we change them? For example, if a customer would uh, recharge top up at night, then maybe I could uh, use that as an event, as an uh, attribute. And then if he keeps on streaming at night, then maybe that KPI would trigger, it would say, that this person is a, a nighttime user. He more of a, he has that kind of profile. So that, that changes in attributes would trigger that KPI. However, this was not enough. As, a, as the catalyst went on, these are all real-time uh, real uh, changes in the attributes of the customer and its tweet. We want to do forecasting and uh, simulation. So what we did is, what we did was we need to use an extended AI data model wherein you can do forecasting and simulation. All your uh, current, AP, uh, current AI models, all your algorithms, you can use them. You can put them in this AI data model. We're not saying uh, you use a specific algorithm. What we're saying is you can use our algorithms, but please use this uh, data that we are trying to, uh, we're trying to propose. It makes it easier, for example, you have your, uh, an attribute of fruits. Some would call it apples, some would call it oranges. Even your apples have green apples. Some even have red apples. So by saying that this is a fruit, anybody who would like to access this data, you just need to get that basket of fruit. Whether it's an apple, it's an orange, you know where to put it, you know where to get it. That's the concept behind the proposal of the extended AI data model. Now, if you would do the forecasting, you only need to do it on this side. You cannot use this uh, real-time uh, real data model because it would skew all the twins listening to this part of the model. Now, if there are any changes that the twin would uh, would able to produce, that twin would then send it back to the other twins that are listening to it. 
through the proposed open API, uh, TM Forum open APIs. Now, if it's relevant to that twin, he can get that information and then uh, maybe, uh, and then relay it back to the other twin. If it's not relevant, then he can just drop the information. Uh, this, this, this concept was actually uh, something we were uh, trying to prove uh, until the uh, later part of the, the catalyst. And then uh, around April, uh, a new participant came in, uh, Atiyah. When we show them this concept, uh, Atiyah was uh, saying that they already have a digital twin of the customer. And using this model and uh, comparing it with their solution, we were able to say that they were very, uh, they easily integrated their solution to this model. So it was very easy for them to come into the catalyst and provide something that's uh, beneficial to TM Forum. Thank you, Philip. Um, I, um, I'd like to invite all of you who's got questions, please feel free to ask our two uh, guests here on the Digital Twin. No questions? Well, in that case, um, I, I would also like to invite all of you to visit um, our booth. It's right over there. All right. Please feel free, come, ar come around, uh, ask us questions. Uh, we have demo running on what that digital twin look like and how they interact. We'll be very happy to give you a demo on the customer twin, how it interacts with the IP twin and with the, uh, with the organizational twin. Thank you for coming.